Welcome to online worship at St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. We pray you felt encouraged and uplifted by our recorded worship over the past several months. A couple of changes will take place to our worship schedule in the next few weeks. On October 25th, we will hold two parking lot worship services, one at 8 a.m. and another at 9.30. At both, we will recognize Reformation Sunday. Additionally, at 9.30, we will celebrate six of our students who will be confirmed through a service of affirmation of baptism. We encourage you to attend and support these young people as they continue their faith journey. On November 1st at 9.30, St. John's will welcome you back into the sanctuary for in-person worship. Safety guidelines are posted on our website. Sunday worship will be live streamed as well. So if you're uncomfortable coming back into the sanctuary, you can watch from home at 9.30. And then later in the day, the service will be available for viewing at any time through our YouTube channel. We thank you for your continued prayers, patience, and understanding as we've explored new ways of communicating God's word with all of you. We look forward to seeing you soon. Be well.
Today's psalm is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among the, all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Good morning. It's October 18th, and I greet you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Gospel lesson today is taken from the 22nd chapter of Matthew. I'll begin the reading at the verse numbered 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere. We know that you teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and you show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Jesus, aware of their malice, said, 
Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered the emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. They left him, and they went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Is it possible that we are in the same position with Jesus' question today as they were nearly 2,000 years ago? Is it possible that this isn't really a trap, but for us, the question is, to whom do we offer our allegiance? To whom are we loyal? To whom, like in a marriage, I love you with all my heart. I'm committed to you for the rest of my life. I will give you all that I am and all that I hope to be. I presided at a wedding just a few weeks ago, and I heard those kinds of comments being made during the vows. During the ceremony, I watched the faces of individuals who were gathered to support this young couple. And I think for many of them, they had a sense of renewal in their own relationships. It's optimistic. All that I am, all that I hope to become, I give all to you. What if we were to say, maybe a little bit more accurately, I give you the best of myself and I give you the worst of myself and yet still you take me. It's kind of the relationship I think we have with God, isn't it? God takes us good bad, the not so good, the ugly, the disobedient, the pride, our sin. And instead of focusing on it, instead of focusing on punishing our sin, God offers something much more spectacular, the opportunity to be reconciled, to be healed, to be loved, to know that we are loved, and to offer that to others. The privilege of loving God the directive to love God and to love people, all people. This text historically, both Matthew chapter 21 and Matthew chapter 22, we've got a number of different Jewish groups approaching Jesus with questions about his authority, about the resurrection, about the law. And today, what about taxes? A complex issue for especially the Jewish community, uh, a community of people committed to serving one God, monotheism, not the emperor, not as the coin would not only suggest but demand. Each person, even those who are being oppressed, continually and now in offering this tax and paying the denarius, they are in fact paying their oppressors to oppress them. The Roman occupancy. Historically, we know that it was a lose-lose by all standards for Jesus. And I think that's why Jesus moves quickly away from the trap question about taxation into a much more general statement about how those in power uh, at that time, maybe like today, can distract us from our primary love, our, our true love in those distractions. To whom will we be loyal? I think they're good questions. I know these are questions. This sermon certainly is probably more for me than it is for you. But I'll do the best I can to not only be a good exegete, to to interpret the text and to get to the heart of the meaning of the text, the plain meaning of the text. But at the same time, what does it mean for us today? 
I'm struggling to remember the name of the contemporary Christian musician. But in one of his songs, he talks about, remind me who I am when I'm feeling lonely, when I know that my heart is not aligned with yours and I'm doing the things that I should not do, when I struggle to accept your love and receive your forgiveness, remind me who I am. I am your beloved, all of me. You don't alone hear my words. I offer myself all of myself to you, God. You actually do something way better. You ask us to give all of ourselves to you as a reassurance that we know that you know it's not all pretty, and yet you take us anyway. You love us. You forgive us. You reconcile us to yourself. You heal our brokenness. Remind us who we are. It's not the image of the person on the coin that we serve. Not if we have wisdom. It's that image in which we were created. Your image, God. I hope that the few words that I've shared with you this morning somehow are helpful. I hope that in this text, You can see, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, but to God, give yourself as God desires to give God's self to us. All people, love God, love people. Be blessed. Please join with me and let's affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's hymn is number 713, O God of Every Nation. And it was actually chosen um, two weeks ago on our Sunday morning uh, hymn sings over Zoom. So a uh, thank you to Phyllis Kirshner, Melanie Conrad, and Betty Long for being there and for sharing your thoughts. The main thing that spoke to all of us about this hymn, O God of Every Nation, was this repeated plea um, for God to restore peace and unity in a strife-torn world. In today's gospel, Jesus draws a distinction between how we interact with God and how we interact with our country. So in the hymn, many of the lyrics are about the things our world values, specifically wealth and power, weapons, pride in race and class, but they're also about what we trust in God to bring to alleviate those things, truth and right, love and mercy. Finally, the last verse uses a metaphor of light to describe this new day that we all hope for when truth and love shall reign. And I think for a lot of us, that sounds pretty good right now. So let's sing together hymn 713, O God of Every Nation. O God of every nation, of every race and land, redeem your whole your almighty hand where hate and fear divide us and bitter threats are hurled in love and mercy guide us and heal our strife-torn world 
From search for wealth and power And scorn of truth and right From trust in bombs that shower Destruction through the night From pride of race and station And blindness to your way Deliver every nation, eternal God, we pray. Lord, strengthen all who labor, that all may find release from fear of rattling saber, from dread of war's increase. When hope and courage falter, Lord, let your voice be heard. With faith that none can alter, your servants undergird. Keep bright in us the vision of days when war shall cease. When hatred and division give way to love and peace, till dawns the morning glorious, when truth and love shall reign, and Christ shall rule victorious o'er all the world's domain. Please join us in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you have called us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation from the rising of the sun to its setting May the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Today, we especially pray for Evelyn, George, and Randy, June, Patty, and Tracy, Brandon, Bill, and Ann, Mary Lou, Charles, and Elizabeth, Marion, Paul, and Tom, Michaela, Lynn, and Levi, Pastor Bob, Mayfern and Karen, Ron, Dave, and Jason, Michelle, Jackie, and Elena, Sandra, Alyssa, and Alex, Betty, Amy, and Barb, Sister Millicent, Donna, and Hugh, Noah, Sarah, and John, Bob, Robin and Linda, Donna, Carolyn and Frank, Cindy, Robert and Sharon, Kelly, May and Joan, Cameron, Richard and Jake, Joanne, Crystal and Roxanne. God of truth, you show no partiality May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, 
and all vocations of the law that your promise of restoration may be known. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. Today, we remember Bruce Undercuffler. Comfort his loved ones with peace that he rests in your presence. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen.